Justice Online is one of the most popular AAA PC MMORPGs in China right now. The game was initially released late 2018 but hasn't received much coverage so far in the West, to the point where it's difficult to find information about this game online. What I can tell you about Justice Online is that it's developed and published by NetEase, the developers who made Revelation Online. It's a heavily story-driven Wuxia-themed game that's fully voice acted and crammed with high-quality cutscenes. The game at its core has an action combat system, but gives you other control options such as top-down, point-and-click, and the game features a mixture of both PvP and PvE content. Oh yeah, this is the game where some dude spent over $1 million on his character, and a friend stole his account and sold it for $550. This game was also featured at the NVIDIA RTX demo showcase at the start of 2019, so it's certainly an MMO that's right up to date with the latest in graphical advancements. If enough of you guys are interested in it, I'll make a guide for how to play this game. Just let me know in the comments below. And for the making of this video, I'm using exit lag to reduce my ping, and I'm using the Google Translate camera app on my phone to translate from Chinese to English. Exit lag referral link in the description below, and use code the lazy peon for 20% off. So we've got the choice between seven different classes. It's going to be difficult for me to tell you what the classes are, but this is a guy with a sword, a bloke with a spear. This person seems like a bard with some kind of Asian instrument. I'm guessing this one's Kung Fu Master or something because they have no weapons. This person wields some kind of incense vase. You've got the princess class here, and this bloke looks like he uses two swords. I'm intrigued what class this woman actually is, so we're going to be her. Oh, there's a male version version as well. It does seem as though there is a female version for each class. Very nice. Asian MMO with no gender lock. And let's jump into the character customization. Straight away getting Moonlight Blade vibes. So here I've got the choice between a bunch of different preset options just to get us started. I'm assuming we can fine tune these though. Let's use this as our foundation. There's about 20 different hairstyles and some of the hairstyles have really long hair which is quite nice. Look at that. And the hair also has physics as well, along with the clothes. Similar to Black Desert and Moonlight Blade, this is one of those games where you can click on different parts of the head and a bunch of different sliders are going to come up. So it seems as though you've got an absolute abundance of options when it comes to creating a face that you like. Change the eyebrows, eyebrow thickness. You can have mascara for your eyes on the top and the bottom. Lots and lots of makeup options. Women are gonna love this character creator. You can also customize your eyelashes. Red stuff to your face. Lipstick, you can have it really red. You can have it bloody purple if you want. A few little face tattoos if you want to. Not really my kind of thing. This is as dark as you can be in this game. You can have glasses. Oh, okay. It's a little bit creepy. This game has a body slider. That's actually kind of rare for a Chinese MMO. Usually you don't get a lot of options when it comes to this kind of thing. So you can either drag or you can fine tune it on the side. You can adjust her hair length with this one. We are finished. Okay, so this is my character. The character customization in this game is really bloody good. And it looks as though you can view your character in different lighting as well. Definitely up there with some of the best character customization I've seen so far in an MMO. I don't know what this text says. Okay game. Now we've got what I'm assuming to be a very long intro cinematic. So this is where we create a name. Random it a little bit. Okay, we've got a name. I don't know what it is. Wow, very beautiful. Look at that water. Production value so far seems pretty high. Let's see if it continues, shall we? Games top down. A lot of Chinese MMOs give you the choice of playing top down or 3D like action combat perspective. So I'm going to assume that this game will give you the same options. Someone's drugged us. Someone's given us some cocaine to sober up by the looks of it. There we go, we've taken a line and now we're all good. Okay, here we go, I was right. So you've got click to move option. You've got click to move with move the camera with the mouse option. You've got tab targeting 3D mode, I guess. And this one I'm guessing is the action combat mode because it shows left click and right click as attack options. So we're gonna go with action combat mode. There it is, we've got a reticule now, and it's a lot more immersive. And as predicted, it wouldn't be a Chinese MMO without some form of auto-pathing. These guys look like they're about to get rowdy. My character is pissed off at them. Grandma's telling me to keep out of it. This guy's being arrogant, he's trying to force this lady to be his wife, she doesn't want to. Okay, here we go, combat time. 
So Q, E, very nice animation. So my character attacks with her clothing. Very nice. And I can dodge with shift plus directional key. I've got a certain amount of dodges I can do. Then I need to wait for it to come off cooldown. Oh, wait, what? Dude, I just broke a table. Wait, does this game have... This game, this game has environmental physics. Look at all of this. I'm knocking stuff in the water. I've knocked over a statue. What MMOs actually have this? I can't think of any. I've got a number one ability. I think it's probably big damage. Yes. Big Frank. Ooh, what's this? Uh, oh, dodge. Just teach me how to dodge. Enemies have their attacks telegraphed. The combat feels really fluid and well animated so far. We didn't actually kill them. They're just on the floor in pain. He's given up. He's going to have to find a new wife. Unlucky pork chop. Everything's rebuilt again. Let's smash everything up. Oh. Someone's pissed off at me. Okay. Oh, bruh! He just kicked me into the water. Oh my god, look at this water though. There's lots of fish swimming around. And the, the fish swim away from me. Okay, that was nice. I just did a massive double jumper. Level seven. Oh, I don't think I mentioned this, but you can sprint if you double tap W. Now we're on a boat, are we? Like, can I smash this table? No, I can't. Okay. So it doesn't seem as though you can smash every bit of environment. Assassins just appear, do they? So I've got some new abilities to test. I've got my C ability. Oh my god. I've got my V ability. Wait, that seems to be a heal of sorts. Big damage. Yeah, my V is definitely a heal. This is the first time I've played a Chinese MMO with good ping. Thanks to exit lag and living in Thailand. Usually I'm playing these games with unplayable fucking ping, but I've got 90 MS playing this game right now, which is brilliant. Nice. Someone's about to get ninja starred. Oh my Buddha, dude. This game looks beautiful. Okay. Got the kids playing, got a bull. What are those kids doing? They're just floating. This is the game just flexing its graphics right now, isn't it? So if you don't like autopathing, you have the option to completely remove it with something called Explorer Mode or keep it with autopathing mode. For the sake of this video and me not being able to read Chinese, I'm going to keep on autopath mode just so I can see as much of the game as I can. The visuals of this place is crazy. Look at that. Look at the water. Can we go for a swim? We can. The ripples in the water as you move through it. Oh wait, you can water run! Of course you can, dude. It's a Chinese game. I was expecting to hit an invisible barrier. I haven't yet, though. Oh wait. Ooh, we dead. Wait, why? I love water running, though. Okay, we did find an invisible barrier. So it's not completely open world. It does a good job of giving you the illusion of it, though. The jumping in this game is pretty cool. You can jump, change direction, and it's almost like you're dashing through the air. Really fun. It's almost like a platformer. I love the jumping. You've got animals running around in the world. Dogs, chickens. The world definitely feels very vibrant and alive so far. Birds flapping around. It's been a long time since I've played Moonlight Blade, but I think visually... This game is probably better. Gonna have to whip out the Google Translate on my phone here. I've got a multiple choice quest thing. If you're not aware already, the way I play these games is I have a Google Translate app on my phone where you point your camera at some foreign text and it translates it to English. So here I have the choice of telling the truth or not telling the truth. We're not gonna tell the truth. And now we've got a butterfly appear on the screen, which I'm guessing symbolizes a butterfly effect and it's going to affect the questing later on. I've been given a bucket. I guess I need to go grab some water. And I actually have the animation for collecting the water. Nice bit of attention to detail. Now we need to pour the water in this bucket. Well, we're kind of putting it on the floor, but... Okay, game. That's level 13. This starting area is a real treat on the eyes. I hope it continues to be this way throughout the game. Play in the water. What's she doing? Oh my god, what's that? That's another player with a vehicle. That just absolutely kicked my immersion in the balls. Some rowdy boys have entered our village. Let's kick some ass. And yeah, they, they don't last very long. 
instantly dead. Great, he's pulled out a shank. Oh. Wheelchair Senpai saved the day. So far, this seems to be a very story-driven game. Voice acting everywhere, cutscenes constantly, infinite amounts of dialogue. Now we're flying on some giant ass birds. Every chance this game gets, it's showing off the visuals. I love it. Can we jump off here? Jump here! It spawned me somewhere completely different. Where am I? Oh my god, look at the detail here! I think this is the most beautiful MMORPG I've ever played. The colours, the attention to detail. Everything's just stunning. Look at the colours of the flowers and everything. Oh god, that was an accident. Okay, I, I'm just kind of pressing the space bar and I'm flying around. That was really cool. Uh, I need to learn how to actually do that. Jump. 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 <laughs> oh my god, that's so fun! And this way. Can you just keep doing it? Bruh, this is awesome! Oh wait. Oh, we're still going. Oh my god. That is the most fun thing about Chinese MMOs, the whole air jumping thing. This is the first time I can remember seeing a peacock in an MMO. It's a very forgotten animal, it seems. So we're in some dude's house. Can we smash it up? Not yet. Level 18? Bloody hell. I just can't stop admiring the graphics. Now we've broken into someone's house and we need to find some stuff. So the game told me to press F12 and equip a new costume, I think. So I've gone from looking like this to looking like this. I think that's an upgrade. The question I'm gonna have to throw to you guys in the comments is, do you think this game has better graphics than Black Desert Online? I think for me the reason this game looks so good is there's no pop-in and everything in the distance just looks like it's full of detail. Whereas in Black Desert, if you start to look in the distance, you see low textures and like crazy pop-in. Black Desert looks insane at close range, but if you start to look away, I think the visuals start to fall off a little bit. Now the sun's setting, look at that. This is romantic, isn't it? This combat is so fucking fluid. Oh, no, do dodge. Oh my god, we're almost dead. Heal. Heal. Dodge. Nice, I think we got him. This guy's trying to fucking kill me. He was just having a little spa. Well, that was predictable, wasn't it? And now my boyfriend's dead. Okay, we're going crazy. We are fucking angry at this dude now. We're not so cute and innocent now, are we? <laughs> so we have some kind of bloodlust mode on or something. Oh, well. Well, that didn't take much. Uh, they're talking shit about me behind my back, so we're hiding in a bush so we can hear what they're saying. My Chinese isn't perfect, but what they're saying is this woman has a great darkness within her and they're trying to figure out what they want to do with me. This guy says we should kill her now. She says no, she's my friend. Now my character said you fucking what mate? And now we're about to confront them all. We're now coming to a compromise where my character wants to be cleansed of the curse and she said she's gonna seek out help. Please don't kill me. Now we're sailing to new lands I think. And we've arrived at some kind of city by the looks of it. Have a look what we can see. This place looks huge. It reminds me of one of the zones from Moonlight Blade. I think this area was from the starting zone. Okay, lots of players running around with horses. I should get a mount soon. When you're air running, you can get really high in the air, then hold down spacebar, and it boosts you forward like a bloody Super Saiyan from Dragon Ball Z. So fun. Okay, that's a lot of players. I guess this is the teleportation point where all the players are teleporting to. I got given a horse. Equip the horse. That's cool. We're leading the horse around with the rope. Let's judge the horse riding animations. So the horse turns, which is nice. It's not the most convincing horse riding I've seen in an MMO. The animations are good, but the movement is very floaty. Moonlight Blade definitely had more realistic feeling horse riding. Three different choices of answer here. Whip out Google Translate. 
For the next hour or so, my audio got messed up, but basically what happens was I ran around for a bit and saw a bunch of high levels. The highest I saw was level 88. I got some new abilities, but was a bit frustrated by the lack of combat quests and overabundance of talk to me quests. I learned that this was one of those MMOs that blur out the background for nice screenshots when you zoom in. I had my immersion broken a lot because of the extremely short pop-in distance of other players. I guess this was the compromise that was needed to make the game run smoothly with such detail. I had more multiple choice butterfly effect quests. The game gave me a questionnaire asking about my real life job, playtime and content preferences. I span an RNG wheel. I watched a player made music video inside the game and praised it thoroughly to increase my social credit score. I visited a lady and watched some fireworks. I got teleported to the desert and chopped down dry grass to find a quest item. I learned that players can impregnate each other and receive flying baby pets. I leveled up some skills to rank 2. I got teleported to a giant temple atop a mountain where I was taught some kind of combo involving the space bar. I had an anti-addiction message pop up and ask me if I wanted to shut down the game. I learned that the air running has a quick time event where you can press both spacebar and F at certain times to stay in the air for longer. I found this to be super fun. I skipped a metric fuck ton of dialogue and did a lot of talk to me quests. I got blinded by the lighting in a new zone. I went for a long walk with grandma and helped her play an instrument. The detail of the area we walked through impressed me a lot. I attacked some leaves. I did what seemed to be some kind of PvP preview, but I couldn't tell if I was fighting other players or NPCs. The screen was in black and white for some reason, and I was super confused. I think it was some kind of PvP tutorial against NPCs, but I might be wrong. And it was at this point I realised my audio was fucked, and I managed to fix it. Hopefully there's more combat the more I play this game. The combat's really good. And it... Bloody hell, that was nice. Bit of CC there. It's a shame I haven't had a lot of combat to do since playing the game with all the talk to me quests but when I do get to fight it's really fun I don't know why we're walking in single file talking to each other that's a little bit awkward this is the first time we've got to see the rain and it looks pretty fucking good I have to say see all the raindrops hitting the water see it hitting the floor oh my god the rain effects look absolutely fantastic the ladies have their umbrellas out as well. We can preview some outfits on my character. Let's have a look, shall we? I'm guessing you buy these off the cash shop. Cool that the clothing in this game has physics that go along with it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Come spend your money here. Many, many outfits. Dress up like female Santa, can I? I like that one. As is typical with a Chinese MMO, there isn't any slutty outfits. Everything's quite traditional. Never mind, this is the one that probably shows the most skin. This one here's a bloody wedding dress. Yeah, some of the dresses are absolutely gorgeous. You can also put things on your back, like cat toys. Oh my god, there's so many options here. Wow! That's fucking cool! That is really nice. Wow. If this game was out in the West, I can see people spending so much money on cosmetics. Lots of different umbrellas, a big bit of grain if you want, branch from a tree. You can have shields on your back, giant swords, a little banjo. I can buy different weapon cosmetics for my class. This is the best one, big fluffy hands. Different items for your head, including one of these things. Well, that's ruined my immersion, hasn't it? <laughs> okay. This thing's like a shrouded hat. Another quest where I need to grab water from the well. Level 35. Another new zone. Let's go explore this one, shall we? A big mountainous zone by the looks of it. With a river running through it. Gorgeous. I think I've finally left the starting area and I can actually just kill some bloody mobs now. We've bitten off more than we could chew. Dodge! Oh, that's some big damage. Big damage! Oh, nice. Yeah, the combat in this game is really, really fun. I like it a lot. I think the reason this combat system feels good and fluid is because it's well animated and the abilities don't lock you in animation for that long. Wait, did that attack just blast the grass? And you can turn whilst doing most of your abilities. It just feels really good. 
Oh, nice. Okay, we're killing huge groups of them now. Okay, we're not going to die. We're good at the game. I'm really enjoying this game. Okay, wait, wait. I pressed the fucking commit Sudoku button. <laughs> my character just, my character just cut her fucking wrists. That's brutal. I'll make quick work of these noobs. Sit. Once again, it's a very rainy day here in central China. I think I'm going to wrap up this video here and probably continue playing this game on stream because I have had a decent amount of fun with it. And I'm really intrigued to see what type of end game content this game has to offer because there's really not much information about it out there on the internet in English that I can find. So after playing Justice Online for around three hours or so, my thoughts on the game so far are as follows. Graphically, it's the most impressive MMORPG I've played so far. The character creation is god tier. The combat is fun, fast paced, well animated and fluid. You're not locked in animation for too long and hitting enemies feels both satisfying and impactful. The game has beautiful music. Although I didn't understand any of it, the cutscenes and storytelling seemed to be done to AAA standard and everything was fully voice acted. The game has cool physics, from the hair and clothing movement, to enemies ragdolling when they die, to some destructible environments, it adds an extra level of immersion to the game. The water running and air jumping is fun as hell, and honestly, you'd have a great time just doing nothing else but running around the zones and admiring the visuals. The game was at a constant 60 FPS plus on my RTX 2070 on max graphics. If some guy spent 1.4 million dollars on their character, I think it's safe to assume this game is pay to win. This game only has servers in China and Taiwan, and I couldn't find any fan-made English patch. As much as I think it would make money, odds are this game will never come to the west. I hope I'm wrong though. When transitioning between quest phases, the game freezes and the environment pops abruptly. I felt a longing for more kill quests. What I experienced in three hours was 90% walking and talking and maybe 10% combat. Hopefully this changes later on. You will get banned if you type Free Hong Kong. Overall, I think this game could be a step above both Moonlight Blade and Sword of Legends Online when it comes to the current best Wuxia MMO out at the moment. The game is super popular right now and every server I checked was either full or at very high player population. This game is fairly easy to play from the West and I hope someone makes an English patch for it because I kind of want to keep playing and see what the end game's like. I'll probably make a how to play Justice Online guide soon for those of you that want to play it, but if you want to figure it out for yourself then exit lag is a must to reduce the ping on this one and you can save money with code the lazy peon and my referral link in the description below. But that's it for this video guys, what do you think about Justice Online? Would you like to see it come to the west? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you again really soon.